There was dancing in the streets as the rally circus returned to the historic city of Chester for the opening round of the British Rally Championship, the Vauxhall Rally of Wales. The starting point was the race course where championship contenders from last year renewed acquaintances and met their colour coordinated fans. The Welsh forests may look idyllic, but they're among the most demanding in the business. On this rally, there'd be 140 miles, much of it in darkness. Malcolm Wilson led the field away in Ford's new world-beating rallying weapon, the Escort. On paper, he was far and away favourite to walk the event. But hot on his heels were the young Subaru upstarts, Richard Burns and Alistair McRae. Both only 22 and both new to powerful Group A cars. This is Alistair and co-driver David Senior egging him on. Flat right into medium left, minus, and flat crest. Also making his debut in a new car, Welsh farmer and former British champion David Llewellyn in a Vauxhall Astra. Windaf Evans and his new team, an even newer car, were in the groove right away. Unlike some. Not only is this the start of a new rallying season with lots of new cars and new drivers in the championship, it's also the beginning of an important era in British rallying. This year there'll be the Formula 2 category and that means that all two-wheel drive cars have got their own championship. It's a, a new category for two-litre cars with, without turbochargers and we think that this is the direction that many, many manufacturers will want to go. They've all got this sort of car available and uh, so we think it's a good direction for the future. Rallying is getting so expensive these days with all the four-wheel drive cars that uh, it's still spectacular at that sort of level and people can relate to the cars. It's more like the average road car rather than the exotica. I think it's very good for the rallying. Um, the spectators want action and the Formula 2 cars certainly give you action, you know. Um, it's a lot more competitive, a lot closer racing and uh, you know, it's what the, what the sport needs really. What is the difference in the technique between driving a four-wheel drive and this one? Well, uh, the main difference obviously is that the front of the car is doing the driving and uh, when you come into a corner, it's important to get the front wheels pointing the same way as the car, so you need to steer with the back of the car with your left foot on the brake and then keep the wheels reasonably straight to go through the corner. I think if it's two sideways, I've been driving it a little bit two sideways I think, because I've been like that and you've got too much lock going the wrong way into the corner mm. and I think it, you just lose all the speed coming out of the corner. A couple of hours into the rally, the cars had reached Snowdonia, and Malcolm Wilson had had a nasty shock. He suddenly realised that this rally wouldn't be the walkover that everyone expected, and he was having to draw on all the skills at his disposal to stay in front. That young whippersnapper Richard Burns was right up there with Malcolm, and had the audacity actually to beat him on a couple of stages. Windup Evans in the Group N Escort was in total control of this section and one minute ahead of his nearest challenger. 90 right junction, surfing, surfing. Co-driver Ian Grinrod was helping David Llewellyn get to know the intricacies of two-wheel drive and they were well in the lead in Formula 2. Meanwhile, in the Lombard Junior section, Brendan Creeley from Northern Ireland was leading in his Honda Civic. And it was the first taste of night driving for former boxer Barry McGuigan. Alas, his Nova was to expire before dawn. The Shell Scholarship winner, Johnny Milner, the challenge was getting used to his new Audi S2. I'm getting mine to Group N. The problem is I've been spoilt for eight years having really good brakes on a Group A car, so this, this car, as you can probably see, the front discs will be glowing away to themselves merrily. <laughs> now, the brakes are good at the start, but then at the end you've not got any. <laughs> After the short halt at Aberystwyth, the heavens opened. For Malcolm Wilson, problems were on the horizon. Not only did he have an engine misfire, but his wipers packed up and co-driver Brian Thomas had to operate them by hand, a sort of flying by wire. All this lost them 10 minutes. The conditions were deteriorating rapidly, fog now being added to the agenda. Alistair McRae, now second to Burns, was quickest of all in these murky conditions. Okay, 50 yards. 
you know, a square right and square left is the next bend you're looking for. Here you go. If the leading drivers were having problems, what about the lower orders? The best plan was to find a set of real lights and play at follow a leader. The weather is unbelievable. I mean, uh, I've never seen fog like that ever before, and it's, you know, with no wipers as well, it's just, it's undrivable. What happened here then, Nigel? Um, we caught a post on the road section. Um, hit a bit of trouble with the fog and caught the bumper. Nothing serious. And um, that's one of the minor problems. We, um, on the second stage, we hauled the sum. On the fourth stage, the drive shaft came to bits and the uh, diff circlips came out. So we lost all traction. We had to pull the drive shaft out and put the circlips back in on the stage. And then we lost the lights on the following stage. Um, one of the wires came off the alternator. So we're having real trouble. Yeah, these lads of yours all rolling around in the mud and everything, are they sort of full-time paid for professional mechanics? They're not, no, everybody does it off their own bat. Um, they all pay their own expenses and um, we work during the week and on a night we prepare the car. I bet they're wondering whether they made the right decision to pay to come today. <laughs> no, I think they have, I, they, they, they said they weren't our cane in getting out the van if I damaged anything, like, so I had to take the last couple of stages fairly steady. After a hard day's night, Dawn eventually broke to find Richard Burns a full three and a half minutes in the lead from Subaru teammate Alistair McRae. For David Llewellyn on his first outing in the Astra, a fine result winning Formula 2. But in conditions like this, I bet he wished he was back in tropical Malaysia where he spent much of last year rallying. And good old Gwyneth Evans also drove a perfect rally to win Group N in his new Escort. So Richard Burns and Robert Reed took their first international victory. The question is, will this year be another clean sweep for Subaru? The next round of the championship, the Pirelli International, is later this month in Kiel de Forest, and we'll be there. Next week, we test the latest in small automatics. Past and future of Grand Prix racing at Donington, and the new line in middle-class transport from Rover. <laughs>